Hello and welcome to the sixth edition of the Cattle Football Update for the 2017 season. I'm Matt Sheeran alongside me, head football coach Dan Musillowitz. How are you doing, Coach Moose? Okay, Matt. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Doing great. Now, um, I do want to ask you, unfortunately, not to start the comments we're looking for in the first game of the MIAA play this season. Throughout the game, were there any positives you were able to pick out from the loss to Hope College? Certainly. Um, you know, we, we definitely had a slow start and uh, got punched in the mouth, so to speak, and, and didn't react while we let, uh, you know, a few bad plays lead to another bad play. Um, and whether we, we missed a tackle or snapped the ball or, you know, a punter's head, and, and then you had a, a three and out, and it just kind of snowballed on us. And, and once we were able to, to kind of calm down at halftime, for sure, we came out with a great fight um, kind of mentality is what we needed to. And uh, we started chipping away at the lead. We made some plays in the second half. We played with great effort in the second half, and it showed our guys that if we play football like we talk about all the time and do what we're supposed to and do our job and play at a time and not try to do something out of the ordinary, that, that you can go play great football and win a football game. We played a great second half, so certainly a really good positive to, to be able to, to pull out was how we finished that game. And uh, but that's the, the thing about college football, you gotta play all four quarters, and I play every minute, every snap, one win at a time. And uh, we, we didn't do that in the first half. It was very out of characteristic, um, is really the kind of phrase that, that I've really tagged it as you know, seeing our performance that, that first half. So I'm happy that we were able to change things around and put together a second half like we know how to play. That was the, that was the, the, key, the key positive for sure out of the game. So. Well, the comments did not seem to match that intensity level right out of the gate. The Flying Dutchman has they scored five touchdowns in the first half compared to zero for the comments. What can you attribute to the defense allowing 35 points in that first half? Sure. Well, you know, I've known Coach Sturzma for a while in that program and what he's done. And that's a, it, what we talked before. They're a very well coached football team, they're a talented football team. Um, but they played extremely hard and extremely physical. And I, it's not on, on the defense. You know, there's certainly a, a play here, a play there, you give up. And we didn't just make a play a few times on the defensive side where we had to make that tackle because we were in a certain defense and they ran a good play and we, a guy had to go make a play. Um, and then, you know, you, you snap the ball over the punter's head and you give him first and goal on, the, I think, the, you know, the six-yard line. And you're in an adverse situation, which we talk about all the time. But, uh, you know, the defense was on the field a lot in the first half. And I think we went three and out our first drive, strung together a great second drive offensively, and then we missed a field goal from a discipline standpoint. So it was, it was a snowballing effect of one bad play, one missed tackle, one guy, you know, out of a gap type of deal that, uh, that really kind of led, you know, their, to, to that snowball effect and, and to have their, you know, their great first half that they had. And to their credit, you know, they made some plays too. They have some talented players and um, they had a good game plan and they executed it. And, you know, we, we missed uh, a few plays here and there that made a big difference um, on, uh, on the defensive side, offensive and special teams for sure in the first half. Now, as you talked about, I mean, on a positive note, the, in the second half, the comments of the Flying Dutchman did seven points in the second half. Was there anything said defensively wise during halftime that in the locker room that translated the team into having a much stronger second half? Sure. Well, you know, Coach Maloney's has done an awesome job, and we made some quick adjustments with some of the things that they were attacking, and we called our guys down to, to realize what they need to do to be disciplined football players on the defensive side with their eyes. And once we did that, we played football like we know how, like I said earlier. And that's you know, it's not only just with great effort, but it's with great attention to detail and discipline. And once we did that, we were in the right gaps. We were making the tackles. We were making the plays and held them to seven points. And they had a great play call to get you know that, that, that touchdown in the second half. But we played football like we know how. And um, you know, the, the message at halftime was the fight, was the fight. It was certainly not the outcome that we wanted in the first half. But the only thing you can do is to fight and to continue to compete and compete and compete. And that's what we did. That's why I'm, I'm happy with how we ended that football game. Would obviously love it to be a lot closer and on the other side. So. Now, senior running back Brandon Campbell had a big day offensively with 140 rushing yards. Why do you think the Comet defense did not really have that ability to shut him down defensively? Sure. Well, some of the, the, the big things that, that he does really well, he's a big, big physical runner and uh, he breaks a lot of tackles. He's not easy. He's very um, like Jerome Washington for us. 
He's got maybe a little bit more speed than, than Jerome, but he's able to run through tackles consistently. And, and they do a good job of putting him in out in space to be able to make one guy miss running through a tackle for a big play. And, and they're going to commit to the run. That's what they do. And uh, they build everything off of it. And that was the, in the first half, that was the big thing where he was able to break a few tackles. And we've been very good um, from a tackling standpoint. We haven't missed too many tackles. And this was a game for us that, that we did, you know, which again was out of character from uh, the defensive side. And he was able to run through quite a few tackles uh, in, the, in that first half that, that broke a couple of those big runs. Yeah. Now on offense, the Comets, statistically speaking, put up numbers as a team that I, I ended up looking at the score, at the box score, sure. and I would have thought the Comets would have had a victory with some of those numbers that they put up. Sure. Jacob Jogman and Cornelius Sachs both having more than 100 receiving yards, and then Jerome Washington rushing for 82 yards. What do you attribute to the offense's inability? I mean, they had a lot of good drives, yeah. but they not find the end zone in the first half. You sure. A couple of those. Yeah, yeah, even in the first half, we came down to one play. We had a, 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 a drop on a, I believe a second and eight that would have been a first down that would have extended a drive that kind of put us behind. Uh, we took a sack on, on, a, on a bad play where we may have been a little bit closer for a field goal range and then, you know, it, Doug missed one where it's out of character again for Doug just to be consistent um, with what he's doing. So it was one play here, one guy there, um, and all it took the way things were going in the first half was that one play to kind of set us behind the eight ball, and then they took advantage of that momentum and uh, kept it going, and, and where we weren't able to, you know, stop the bleeding, so to speak, that, uh, is the phrase that everybody always uses in, in football, just to stop that, stop that momentum and take it one play at a time doing our job. Now, on special teams, and you've used this word a lot, is uncharacteristic afternoon for the Comets. It was a missed field goal, missed extra point, yeah. and a punt that went wrong with a high snap. Yeah. What do you see on those plays? Can they easily be corrected going into the rest of the season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Doug is, like you said, very out of characteristic with some of the pressure he had. And he's, I mean, it's the, when you know your guys are, or your men are well coached and they understand the game and they come off and say, yes, I did this, or yes, this was. Um, this is what I screwed up on that play. My technique wasn't um, what it needed to be, or my eyes weren't where they needed to be. Um, and that's the same thing with both the snap and the kick is, is fundamental technique. And uh, that can be corrected. We coach it every day. Um, we're going to continue to put our guys in situations with the music on and, and where they have that pressure where they have to make a play and uh, so that can easily be corrected and and some of the other stuff is, is to you gotta give hope some credit of, of what they did schematically and how hard they played to be able to get some pressure on us um, on the PAT to get that block and, um, and so we have to we have to be better at what we're doing as simple as that with a leverage standpoint with our fundamentals and our techniques um, once again out of characteristic in that part of the game um, from those guys. Now looking ahead to this week's game, Kalamazoo College is currently 0-4. They're the only winless team left in the MIAA in terms of overall record. I want to ask you, is this team better than its record indicates? Yeah, I, I truly believe that. And I know, and we know that staff really well. I've known Coach Orbo for a long time. And his, his guys are very fundamentally, technically sound, play hard. They're any Kalamazoo team that we've ever faced in the last six years now. Um, and beyond that, that's been coached by Coach Orbo. It played extremely hard, and they've been in some games, and and they've gone toe to toe with uh, some really good opponents. Too. You know, they're you know you don't start off with every day with Wheaton College, and uh, who's a, who's a good one. And so they play really hard, and and they present a lot of a, a lot of tough things from a offensive and defensively standpoint that uh, that they do really well that we're going to have to prepare for, and uh, and be ready for. And so yeah, they're they're better than than zero and four, and. Uh, like any opponent in the MIAA, if, if, if you don't come ready to play, you're going to be in a game and, and you're going to lose. It doesn't matter who you are if you don't show up and do the little things correct. And so that's going to be a point of emphasis this week is, is we're going to play hard. We're going to compete hard. We're going to play physical. And uh, we're going to have that attention to detail um, because you have to. That's how you have to play the football. Uh, how do you have to play the game of football? Now, in the first four games, the Hornets rolled up an average of 248 yards total offense a game with an average of 161 through the air and 87 on the ground. Does this present a big challenge for this kind of defense? Sure, and Kalamazoo likes to spread the field offensively, 
and get it to their guys out in space. They have a great offensive system. They got a good quarterback, and uh, I know because we recruited him. And he's a he's a tough. Uh, Alex White is a tough kid. That's got a great arm. He's mobile, and uh, so that certainly presents a challenge that you have to be disciplined within your lanes to be able to keep him contained, and then disciplined within the coverage and the things that how we defend the things that they want to do offensively. Um, and then, you know, certainly, you know, defensively, they, they, they do some good things that uh, make it tough to run the football and, um, and put their guys in, in positions to be able to make plays on the defensive side. But. Now, Kalamazoo has played a couple of quarterbacks this year. You talked about senior Alex White, he's been yeah. a predominant guy, but also a addition juniors Zach Van Fossian mm -hmm. for the first four games. Can you elaborate on the impact of having senior leadership at that quarterback position for Kalamazoo and what this sure. means to their offense and what right. problems this can cause in your defense? Really, we've we've seen that leadership and we've been blessed with great quarterback play since we've been here and a great quarterback coach, honestly. Yeah. And uh, and so that is immense and we're in Lane is, is a, one of the best leaders we have, if not the best leader we have on this football team. And, that impact is massive with the entire team, not just within the offense. And I would imagine that Alex White is that type of player for them. And uh, that is extremely important. Everybody looks to your quarterback to be the guy, to be the vocal guy, to be the leader on the field uh, by example and what he says. And um, that's, that's huge for a team's confidence uh, when somebody punches you in the mouth. And that's huge for a team's confidence when you're playing really well too. And so that is, uh, one of the most important things. That's why those guys get paid the most in the NFL. <laughs> you know, and that's why you know the Patriots are great every year. They have a great quarterback. It's a great leader. And uh, some of the best teams in in all of college football and the NFL are the ones with the best quarterbacks with those type of intangibles. Now the Hornets' passing game, based off their numbers, has produced so far six passing touchdowns, seven interceptions. How important will it be to shut down the running game? The Hornets force the passing game to become a factor in this game. Sure. Um, you you got to stop the run like we talked about no matter what. Um, Kalamazoo likes to throw the football to enable them to be able to run the football. And, and they're going to be balanced attack at, at, if you give that to them. And so there's, there's no doubt that you have to stop the, the run no matter who you're playing um, to win the football game. They still like to throw the football and, and you got to be prepared to have the quarterback be a runner as well. Um, and, and that's a big thing. If, if you can limit him on uh, his scrambles in quarterback runs too, then uh, it, it puts them in a position where you know they want to have to throw the football, and uh, it allows you to play a little bit more aggressive defensively. Now, Kalamazoo has allowed an average of 447 yards total offense, 226 on the ground, and 221 through the air in four games thus far in the 2017 season. How important will it be for the Comets to have a balanced offensive attack against the Hornets? Yep. It is the most important thing moving forward um, that we have to do offensively is to be balanced. We have to be better at running the football. We got to be more physical running the football and assert our physical presence that way. And then uh, we have to be extremely efficient in the passing game. We have, uh, we always want to be balanced. We always want to try to be balanced with the things that we're doing. That makes our offense extremely hard to prepare for and makes us dangerous when um, you have to you have to defend the run, and but yet you still have to defend the pass, and puts guys in positions where they have to read and either be aggressive to the run or in the pass, um, and make them be essentially disciplined on the back end as well. So that's uh, the most important thing moving forward that we have to do offensively. Now, final question: This year's game is being played at Angel Field in Kalamazoo. With it being the first road MIAA game of the season, in an environment like Kalamazoo. Will this provide a challenge to the Kalamazoo football team trying to bounce back after last week's loss and Kalamazoo looking for their first win of the season? Sure, I mean, it's an adverse situation. And, you know, they have a great game day environment and a beautiful stadium. And, um, and so that, just that challenge alone, being away from home and, and being somewhere where, shoot, I think we played there two years ago. So it's been a while for some of our guys to walk into any NYAA um, opponent at their place is tough. It's tough. And, um, no matter what, that you got to play the game. You got to spot the ball, and you got to play it in between the lines. And uh, and that's we're, we're going to have to go play good football. Um, no matter who we're playing, no matter where we're playing, whether it's in a parking lot or if it's you know at, at, in Kalamazoo. Um, and so we're going to be ready uh, to play, and, and we're going to prepare this week uh, like we've never prepared before, and and have uh, a, a great practice week. One Thank day, you, Coach one day at a time, right? Yeah. One, one day at a time. So thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Thanks, Coach Moose. Yep. Yes, sir. Look forward to talking with you next week.
This does it for this week's Count Football Update. You can tune in this Saturday at 89 1 the 1 WOCRFM or go to WOCRFM.com to catch all the action as the Comets take on the Kalamazoo College Hornets. Kickoff is at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time with pregame starting at 12.40 p.m. Be sure to come back next Wednesday for the next Common Football Update as Coach Musellowitz and I will discuss the game against the Hornets as well as against the rival Albion College Britons. In the meantime, you can also get all the latest information on all of Olivet's varsity athletic teams on our website, www.olivetcomets.com. You can also follow and like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching for at Olivet Athletics. You can also follow WOCR on Twitter by searching at WOCR891 and on Instagram at WOCR89.1. For head coach Dan Lucellowitz, I'm Matt Shear. We'll see you next week for the next edition of the Count Football Update.